Thanks for joining us for this episode of Freeing ERP series on Profit 21. In today's webcast, we're going to talk about what item history is and why you should use it. Uh, I'll take you through the header, looking at the usage graphs and the best fit formulas. We're going to talk about what each field in the detail section means. Uh, we'll go through the history drill down feature, and then we'll also talk about the concept of filtered versus actual usage. First, it's important to understand why you would want to even use item history to begin with. When you're using advanced forecasting, or really any type of forecasting, your usage history needs to be pristine. And John Schreibfeder at Effective Inventory Management, I thought, always did a great job of describing what usage is. Usage is not sales. Usage is not shipments. Usage is not invoices. And usage is not orders. What usage is is a special table of your item's history that is designed to reflect what should have happened. So what this allows you to do is basically correct for things like uh, a customer comes up with a crazy one-time sale that's never going to be repeated. Well, you don't want to be replenishing your inventory based on that, so you need to get that back out of the system. Or maybe you had a stock out where you should have sold 100 of something, but you didn't only because you didn't have it. Well, you want to be able to put that back into your usage table because you don't want the zero polluting the rest of your history and thereby disrupting your forecast. So having a dedicated usage table actually gives you the ability to do that. So in P21, item history is where you can make these corrections to deal with things like unusual usage and smoothing out the forecast based on what should have happened rather than what actually did happen. Let's go ahead and get into our item history screen. You're going to do that from the inventory module and it's under inventory management system and then item history. Once the screen loads you're going to need to put in both a location and an item ID. This feature deals with location items so it's not just for the whole overall item. We're going to put in our central distribution location which is location 10 and we're going to work with the claw hammer. So when we bring that up we get a lot of things filled out on the screen but what we want to do is focus at the top of the screen first. So let's take a look at the usage tab. And you can see the number of periods in season is zero, which indicates this is not a seasonal item. The year and period first stock are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we're not using a usage lock, so none of that is filled out. Uh, it tells us you know, what type of forecasting we're using. Uh, this is a trend pattern based upon its usage, and those are settings that were set up in the advanced forecasting module. Like item master inquiry, this screen also gives us a usage graph. So when we click on that tab, we can get a pretty good idea of what the actual forecast or the filtered forecast is, depending on which we're using, and we're going to go over that in a little bit. What the current formula forecast is, based on history, and also what the forecast has been over time. Because your formula can change from month to month based upon your usage pattern. One other thing we can do in the header, we can look at the formula that it's using. So uh, in order to do that, you just want to right click in the header of the screen. So we'll come back over here to item, right click in the header, and then just click display best fit formula. What you're going to see there is the formula and weights that are being used for each period. Now we want to start moving through the fields at the bottom of the screen. So let's go ahead and bring this up so we can see some of the more recent periods and we'll just adjust our screen up a little bit here so we can get a little bit better view. And what we see here are a lot, you know, a lot of different data points for what we're trying to look at. Year and period, again, very self-explanatory. Actual usage is the actual number of, of pieces that went out. Our scheduled usage would be if we had any usage scheduled for, you know, whatever reason, that would be there. Uh, forecast usage is what Profit 21's advanced forecasting module thought we were going to use based on the best fit formula for that period. Forecast deviation percentage shows how much that forecast was on or off. And you can see it's all over the map because trying to predict anything in the micro level can be very difficult. Very few items in your product offering are going to be so stable that you can predict them like clockwork with a very low forecast deviation. Um, average error percentage shows what the forecast error has been over time. Now, MAPE is the mean average percentage error. That's a statistical term. It's not one of my favorites, to be honest with you. It does have some statistical bias built into it. It's a very popular way um, in statistics of measuring forecast error. There have been studies on this statistic that have shown that it's got some flaws to it. And one of the key flaws is that it treats negative values and positive values very differently. So it's kind of biased against negative values. Now the way P21 has set theirs up, you can never have a negative MAPE 
But at the same time, I'm just not a big fan of using anything that has that type of bias. So I personally don't pay a lot of attention to this. You may find some use out of it, and if you do, great. Um, filtered usage is your adjusted usage. That's the usage that you're actually going to go with. Now, Profit21 can uh, do the filtered usage uh, in some instances, depending upon if you meet certain thresholds of uh, you know, erratic behavior. Uh, or you can affect the filtered usage, and we're going to get into how you do that in this lesson. So your service level uh, is based on your period-to-date hits divided by your period-to-date orders. And all a hit is is an invoice line where you achieved uh, a minimum hit target at the invoice line level. That is by default set to 100% in system settings. So what that means is for you to score something a hit by default you would have to ship every single piece. Now in some industries if you have a plus and minus tolerance you may want to bring that down in system settings to 98, 99 percent, whatever is appropriate for you so that your scoring hits correctly which is feeding back into your service level correctly. Then you have a number of orders which you know pretty self-explanatory how many orders did I get for it? And then the last one, I, I have to be honest, I don't really get it. I don't understand, you know, what the significance of average error percentage divided by MAPE is. I also wasn't able to find any documentation on it in Profit 21, so I'm really not sure what it does, to be honest with you. So I don't personally use it, and I don't find a whole lot of value in it, but for you, it, it may be something that, that works great. So if it does, that's awesome. Now that we've been through all the fields, let's start talking about how we really affect these things. For all of the data on this screen, you can really only affect a couple of things. Uh, there's two ways to do it. Number one, you can just put in a filtered usage. So if we say in uh, 9 of 2016, we'll just take the top period here, if we had 6,295 units sold, but we know we were stocked out and we should have sold 10,000 units, then you can just very easily come in here and say, okay, well, I want the filtered usage to be 10,000. You can see that the edited flag automatically turns on. And what you want to do anytime you edit one of these is go ahead and click the recalculate checkbox and then the recalculate button and let these calculations go ahead and, and update themselves and then you see the flag goes away. Um, the other way that you can affect usage is to actually look at the usage entries. Okay, so what we can do is say we're going to look at 12 of 2016 which seems to be an exceptional month of over 27,000 units. When we click on the actual usage the who bought what tab activates and it shows us every entry that goes along with the usage for that period. Now we have to assume with such an exceptional month that there's something in here with a very high usage amount. So you can see that our normal quantity is less than 100 pieces with the 100s here and there. So we'll just kind of start going through here and trying to find the exceptional one. And here we go. We find it order number 1387030 seems to be very exceptional at 25,000. Now that was just a one-time buy or something that's never going to happen again. And what we want to do is get that particular one out of the system. Now that can be done when the order is originally entered because you can exempt it from usage but obviously that didn't happen in this case what we want to do is get this 25,000 pieces out of the system we do not want to use that as a basis for replenishment we're just going to right click on that entry click the update usage button and that is going to take it out of the system then we don't have to worry about it anymore it will not become part of our forecast the last thing that you see at the bottom is a little note that says there's a discrepancy in usage of nine pieces this is a, a, can be an extremely variable number. Uh, the way that you get discrepancies in usage, a, a couple of the key ways that you usually get them is this does not take into account production components. You're not going to see entries for that here. And you're also not going to see anything dealing with substitute items. So if you used a substitute or you substituted this items, that's going to show as a discrepancy. So if you need to get those out of the system, the best thing to do is go back over to the History tab and just simply filter that usage right out and you're good to go. Once you're done editing your item history, if you want to update the forecast, you need to go and execute a reforecast, and that's done in demand year maintenance. We have another video on that, so you're free to go watch that and you know see exactly how that process works. So the last things I want to really get into are the forecast deviation and the filtered usage versus actual usage. Okay, Filtered usage 
if a value exists, so if that edited flag is checked or if there is a value for filtered usage, it is going to override the actual usage. So in this case, as P21 is doing its forecasting every month, what it's going to say is, okay, is there a value in filtered usage? If the answer is yes, then what it's going to do is it's going to take that value. If the answer is no, then it's going to take the actual usage value. So that's how you can kind of keep up with which usage is actually being utilized by the system to generate the forecast. It's always filtered first. If there's no value in filtered, then it's going to default back to actual usage and assume that everything that's in there is supposed to be there. The last thing I want to cover is forecast deviation percentage, only because this is a sort of a near and dear to my heart issue. Um, I use a different formula for forecast deviation. And the formula that I use, uh, again, comes from Effective Inventory Management. Uh, that's EffectiveInventory.com. If you've never been on that site, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of good information there. Uh, John Schreibfader, the owner, is, is a phenomenal inventory consultant. His forecast deviation formula, I find, works very well. And the way his formula works is the absolute value of the forecast minus the actual value. So it's always a positive number because you're taking an absolute value. And then take that number and divide it by the lower of the actual or the forecast. And when you're using that formula, what you want to look at is, is my forecast deviation less than 35%? Now, using this formula where it's got negatives and, and positives, to me, that's a little bit harder to read. and It's a little harder to keep up with. If the forecast is 25% low or 25% high, to me, it's still off by 25%. The direction, to me, doesn't really matter that much. So um, that's just my recommendation. You could absolutely DynaChange this and drop in a calculated field. That's all we've got for today. Uh, really appreciate you uh, sticking with us and watching this video. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Freeing ERP.